we have just a few more things to add to the high side and then we'll be ready to add the control wires. We'll do that at the end but we'll be ready to add them once we have added these 330 ohm resistors to the base of the PMP for each of them as well as a shock key diode with the cathode of that diode pointing toward the base of each of these PMPs. We need to add that to each of the PMPs we've just added to the bore. Looking back at our PMPs, we will need to add a 330 ohm resistor in the same row of the breadboard that the base leg of the PMP is located in for each of those, as well as that 10K pull downs connected to the back side in that same rail as the base leg. So we need 330 ohm resistor from here to this side of the breadboard, from here to a row in this side of the breadboard, like that. Now we just need to add in two diodes with the cathode leg of the diode pointed toward that 330 ohm resistor and turn pointed toward the base leg of the PMPs. Given that we have a limited space, we can orient the diodes in this way. It accomplishes the same thing as putting them in a straight line. We have the cathode of the shock key diode in the same rail as the other leg of the 330 ohm resistor and then we have its other leg up just in a rail to itself. And due to space constraints, we can take our second shock key diode and locate the cathode leg of this diode in the rail that the leg of that 330 ohm resistor is in. We can add it in just like this. When completed, your board will look like this. There's the cathode leg in the same row as the 330 ohm resistor. And then these extra legs, these are where we will hook unlatch lines that will come from our momentary buttons eventually when we get to that point in the build. Let's do this same, add these base resistors as well as these diodes to the other two relay circuits. When complete, your board will look like this. We have added those 330 ohm resistors to the base, one leg of that resistor to the same row that the base of each of these PMPs is located in as well as took the other leg over the trough in the breadboard and added the, the shock key style diodes. It's important that they're shock key. You want diodes with the lowest voltage drop you can get and add the cathode of those diodes connected to the leg of that 330 ohm resistor and that rail three times. At this point we can do another test to make sure that this circuit's going to work. Notice that as we get to a critical moment, we'll stop and test. That's the way to catch a problem before you have the whole circuit built and then you can't find the problem. <laughs> I've done it many, many times and I've just learned through doing circuits of this size and much larger that it's worth the time and the effort to set it up so you can test it as you go along. Let's do a test. What we will do is connect this row in the breadboard that the relay's coil is in. We'll connect a wire from here to ground on each of these in turn and that should trigger our LED to come on and then we can take our other jumper wire and connect it in the row that the end of these shock keys is located and then touch the end of that jumper wire to the VCC line and that should shut off our LEDs. Add these jumpers to the circuit, take this jumper wire, connect it to this negative side of the coal to ground. It's plugged it in the ground rail. We apply power to the circuit. The red LED should come on. And it does. So we know that those PMPs are conducting all is well. Now we want to see if we can in a sense unlatch this relay via each of these PMPs in turn. So we put the red jumper wire and the row that in this case the anode leg of the diode is in and if we touch the VCC line in the breadboard this LED should go out and it does. It goes out because we are raising the base of that PMP above that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts below whatever your voltage is sitting at its emitter threshold. It has to be 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts below whatever is sitting at its emitter. It is that way given this 10K. But when we apply VCC through this diode, to the, through the 330 ohm resistor to the base of that PMP, that effectively 
turns that PMP off. And if it turns off, then there's not a continuous path to the relays coal anymore. Then we do the same test for each of these PMPs. Take the wire, plug it into the row that the anode of that Schottky diode's in, and then plug it into the VCC row. And when you touch the VCC rail, the LED should go off. That, that is shutting off a PMP so that there's no longer a continuous path from VCC that can source current to the relay's coal onto ground. So we know that this relay circuit works. Now we move to the next and test it. Same procedure, we start out by taking our jumper wire, connecting it to the negative side of the coal. We connect jumper wire into ground, our LED should come on. Then we go to these upper two diodes, connect our jumper wire into the row that the anode of this diode is located in, and then touch it to the power rail. It should turn off the LED if we've done everything right. And it does. Then we connect the jumper wire into the row that this lower diode's in and then touch the power rail. It should cut the LED off. And it does. Repeat it with the final relay circuit. Good. That means everything's working at this point as it's supposed to. Let's go back to the schematic and add some more components.